Hi, it's David Williams here. I'm an instructor in the Electronic Engineering Technology Department at Okanagan College, and I want to talk to you today about summing amplifiers using op amps. And we see a typical summing amplifier circuit right here. And, and the general idea of the summing amplifier is it's going to take some number of inputs, and it, in theory it could be any number of inputs, and then the output of the circuit is going to be proportional to the sum of those input voltages. So here's that summing amplifier circuit again, and what I'm going to do is show you how this output voltage here is proportional to the sum of all the input voltages. But what we're going to do, I'm just going to focus on having three inputs. So here we've got an input voltage 1, an input voltage 2, and I'm going to call this input 3. And we'll just ignore this, this uh, signal right here, so let's ignore that guy. So we've got three input voltages applied through the appropriate resistors R1, R2, and R3, and then we have a feedback resistor from the from the output feeding back into the inverting terminal of the op operational amplifier. So we're going to make a couple of assumptions with this circuit. So here's, here's my assumptions. The first assumption is that we're dealing with uh, an ideal op amp, and, and actually this that assumption is going to, to go across both of these, both of these assumptions. Uh, so uh, having an ideal op amp, then we're going to have an open loop voltage gain that's very big. And so the consequence of having an open loop voltage gain that's very big, and on top of that having this feedback going from the output back to the inverting terminal, is that the voltage at the non-inverting terminal is going to be equal to the voltage at the inverting terminal and that's going to be equal to zero volts. Here we've got the voltage at the non-inverting terminal and here we've got the voltage at the inverting terminal and they're going to be set up so that they're at approximately the same voltage and because the non-inverting terminal is at ground the inverting terminal is going to be at virtual ground. The second assumption is that the input resistance of my in inverting terminal and my non-inverting terminal is also very big. And what that means is that any current flowing through these resistors, no, well, none of that current flowing through these resistors here is going to flow into the non-inverting terminal. And we're going to use that assumption to see that the current through R1 here, the current through R2 here, and the current through R3 there, see they're joining, current through R3 is joining up with R2 here, and then those two are joining up with R1 here, and all of that is going to go be going through RF. So we can say that the current through R1 plus the current through R2 plus the current through R3 is equal to the current through that feedback resistor. Now if we take the fact that the voltage at the inverting terminal is at ground, is 0 volts, the voltage across R1 is simply going to be V1 minus 0, or in other words V1. So if we've got V1 across this resistor R1, we can rewrite the current in that form according to Ohm's law. Same thing for the, for the resistance and the voltage of this across the resistance R2. V2, the voltage V2 is going to be applied across this R2 resistor. So the IR2, the current through R2, will be voltage across it divided by the resistance of it. And in the third case, we have the same thing. We've got V3 across R3 to give us the current through R3. Then on the other side of the equation here, we've got V out voltage across RF, but you'll note that we've defined the current as flowing in this direction. So it's going in this direction through RF. So the voltage across RF, we have to def we have to define it as zero minus V out. So zero minus V out is simply V out. So we've got this voltage of negative V out across the feedback resistor RF. So if we rewrite this equation in terms of V out, we get V out is equal to negative RF over R1 times V1 minus Rf over R2 times V2 minus Rf over R3 times V3. Or, in other words, let's, let's make this uh, a sum. 
we can factor out all the negative signs here and we'll get negative RF over R1 times V1 plus RF over R2 times V2 plus RF over R3 times V3. So V out is equal to the inverse of RF over R1 times V1 plus RF over R2 times V2 plus RF over R3 times V3. So it's really, our V out, we can see, is proportional to the sum of V1 plus V2 plus V3. And in fact, if RF on R1 and R2 and R3 are all equal to each other, all four of these resistors are equal to each other, so this, this special case, we get V out is equal to negative V1 plus V2 plus V3. So V out is the equal to the sum of the voltages, but just the inverse of the, of the, of the sum, or the, the negative of the sum of the voltages. And if we're dealing with, with sinusoidal waves or AC signals, then all that means is V, is v out is 180 degrees out of phase with the sum of V1, V2, and V3. So hopefully you learned a little bit about summing amplifier circuits, and I'll see you in the next video.